Hi, in this particular video, it's going to be a continuation of the quick test mock tests that I do. This particular one is aimed at roughly about grade five or so. Should take you about uh, 20 minutes to half an hour to work through. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, compare your solutions. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, so this is um, a quick test. It should take about 20 minutes, half an hour or so to work through. It's aimed at roughly about grade five. Don't worry too much about the A there. My plan is to have a number of these tests available to you. But what I've done is I've picked out what I believe to be, roughly speaking, grade five type questions. Now, the first one's a little bit tricky to actually put onto the video, but if you click on the description link below all of this information, will be in the description. So basically, we're looking at Carrie's journey where she's walking uh, from school and then Josh's journey where he's cycling home from school. And we're going to draw our own distance time graph to actually illustrate the information that we've got. So what I'll do is just put it here and then I'm going to use a ruler. Now, always with distance time graphs, you need to make sure that the bottom line is actually your time and then the vertical line here is going to be the distance travelled. OK, so uh, it's kind of important to always make sure you label things as well. Um, I'm going to actually label it straight away because then I don't have to think about it afterwards. So it's distance in miles and then time in hours. OK, so um, both uh, students leave school at four o'clock. Well, that's perfectly fine. So here's four o'clock. OK, now I'm just going to put into here something like uh, 4.15, uh, 4.30, um, 4.45 and then five o'clock. OK, now I have obviously prepared for this, but you would need to kind of read through all of the information at the top there. And hopefully you'll be able to work out from those the kind of timings that you need. So basically, if we look at Carrie's journey, well, she left school at four o'clock and she lives two miles away. She walks at a speed of four miles an hour. So basically, after a quarter of an hour, because she does four miles an hour, after a quarter of an hour, she's worked, she's actually walked one mile. OK, so that would be that point there. OK, she then stops in the park, has a chat with a friend for 30 minutes. So she's stationary for 30 minutes and it takes her through to 440. And there she is at 4.45. And then she walks the final mile to go home. Well, again, it's going to take her 15 minutes actually to go home if she's walking at a speed of four miles an hour. So she's going to walk and she'll get home at five o'clock and she lives two miles away. And that would be her point at home. And that is carry. OK, so let's have a look at Josh. Well, he's going to do exactly the same um, leaving school at four o'clock, but this time he cycles at a speed of eight miles an hour. But after um, a quarter, after two miles, he decides to stop at the park. Well, those two miles, because he's cycling at a speed of eight miles an hour, that's actually also going to take him quarter of an hour. So here he is at two miles. OK, and when he's there, he also chats to his friend for about half an hour or so. OK, so that's going to take him through to 4.45 and then he cycles the rest of the way home. Now, he's cycling at a speed of um, eight miles per hour. So therefore, it's going to take him another quarter of an hour to cycle the remaining time, uh, the remaining distance to get him through to four miles where he, he lives away from school. So that's going to be four miles. And he also gets home at five o'clock. OK, hopefully that's OK for you. You probably do need to have a look at the description to get a little bit more detail on that. But it's um, it should be OK to work through. I appreciate normally you do get a distance time graph, but on this particular one, they want you to actually write your own. OK, let's move on then to question number two, which is uh, fairly straightforward algebra, where we're being asked to solve this particular equation. So what we're looking for is two numbers that when we multiply them together will make positive 12 and when we add them together will make minus 8. Well those two numbers are going to be minus 6 and minus 2 because then minus times a minus is a plus. 
and minus six minus two is gonna give you minus eight. So I can write that out as x minus six multiplied by x minus two equals zero. Now you'll notice that it does say solve, not factorize. Okay, so in order to solve this, what we're saying is, is that if x minus two equals zero, then therefore x must equal six. And if x minus two equals zero, then x must equal positive two. And that would actually be the answer to that particular question. Okay, let's move on then to question number three. Now, this is a very uh, typical density type question. So what we've got is material A and material B. We're going to put them together and make a material C. OK, so let's have a look at A. Well, as always with these, do write the formula. And I would try to encourage you to always write the formula of density equals mass over volume. And what we're told is that material A has a density of 5. Um, it also has a a mass of 380 grams. You've got to be very careful reading these questions sometimes to sort of separate out the information that you need. So we've got five as the density, the mass is 380. Now, one of the things to check also is that we are talking about grams and grams. Okay, so just be very careful there. Now, through manipulation of this, if we divide 380 by 5, we're going to get the actual volume. So the volume is going to be 76, and that's going to be centimetres cubed of material A. OK, let's have a look then at material B. And again, just for the completeness, I'm going to write the actual formula. Density equals mass over volume. OK, and it just helps me to remember this. I would always advocate it whenever you're doing any GCSE revision. OK, let's have a look at material B. Well, we're told it's got a density of 3.1 grams grams per centimetre cubed, so grams. But it's actually got a mass of 1.24 kilograms. So what you've got to remember is that that 1.24 is exactly the same as saying 1,240 grams. So just be very careful with these types of questions that you make sure that you use the correct units. OK, so again, 1240 divided by 3.1 is going to give me a volume of 400 and that's again centimetres cubed. OK, so now I've got enough information to be able to work out my density for material C. So let's look at C. Well, again, I'm going to write density equals mass divided by volume. OK, but now I'm going to be asked to work out the actual density itself. Well, the mass is going to be the mass of material A plus the mass of material B. So that's going to be 380 plus 1240. I'm going to divide it by the volume of material A plus the volume of material B. So that's going to be 76 plus 400. When I work all of that out in a calculator, I'm going to get 3.4033. OK, to one decimal place, that's going to give me 3.4 grams per centimetre cubed. And that would be the answer to question number three. OK, let's move on then to question number four. Please do stop the video, have a go at these questions and then compare your solutions. OK, so a very popular standard form type question here. 6.5 times 10 to the power of minus 4. Well, basically, the decimal point has moved four places in this direction. So it becomes 0 0.0006. Five, OK, and then this one, work out the value of that, multiply by that. Well, it doesn't actually say here non-calculator. Um, so I guess you could use a calculator, but just for the purposes of today, I'm actually going to work this out as a non-calc. And what I'm going to do is separate the 5.4 multiplied by the 2.3. So I'm going to have 54 times 23, and I'm going to work that out in my particular way. Um, you might might use a slightly different way of doing this but basically hopefully the two of us should get the same answer of one two 
5.42. Okay, so that is 5.4 multiplied by 2.3. Now, the next bit is the standard form of it. So this is 10 to the power of 4 multiplied by 10 to the power of 3 is going to give us 10 to the power of 7. Now, if this was a three mark question, you would get two marks at that point because, strictly speaking, it's not in standard form. Standard form is where the first number is between 1 and and 9. So that's going to give you 1.242 multiplied by 10. And this time I've moved the decimal point an extra place. So it's 10 to the power of 8. OK, so hopefully that's all right for you. We'll have a go at non-calc also for the second question, which is 3.5 divided by 7. OK, so again, I'm going to treat this separately and then the standard form of it is 10 to the power of 7 divided by 10 to the power of 2. Well, the second part of it is fairly easy. We just subtract the actual um, indices. So that's 10 to the power of 5. No problem there. The other part of it is 3.5 divided by 7. So 3.5 divided by 7 is the same as saying 35 over 70, which is actually a half or in decimal. I'm I'm going to put 0.5. So now I've got 0.5 times 10 to the power of 5. Well, I need to be very careful to move my decimal point back again because I want to make sure this first number in standard form is between 1 and 9. So it becomes 5 times 10 to the power of 4. And that's the answer to that particular question. OK, hopefully that's OK for you. I do appreciate uh, you might have used your calculator on that one. It's perfectly fine to do so if it says if it doesn't say whether it's non-calculator or not, but I thought I'd give you the explanation as a non-cal. OK, let's move on then to question number five, which again, enormously popular, these kind of um, working with percentages, they call them reverse percentages. There is a playlist and a worksheet on the, on the website if you want to have a look at that. So what we're saying is the sale price is 195.50. Now that equals basically 85 percent of the normal price okay because it's a reduction of 15 percent so what i'm going to do is i'm going to convert that then to decimals and i'm not going to write of the normal price i'm just going to write 195.50 equals 0.85 n all right, so if I want to find the value of n i divide both sides by 0.85 OK, and that's going to give me a value of N of 230. So therefore, the normal price of the PS4 must be £230. And that would be the answer to that question. OK, let's move on to question number six, which is an expand and simplify. OK, um, again, you might have a slightly different way of doing this. I tend to use a kind of a crab claw. So 6P times P is going to be 6P squared. 6p times minus 3 is going to be minus 18p, minus 4p, and then a minus times a minus is a plus, so that's going to be plus 12. OK, I'm going to tidy that up a little bit to 6p squared minus 22p plus 12. Now, you might also spot that you can actually reduce this again to simplify it even further by dividing through by 2. So I'm going to get 3p squared minus 11p plus 6. And that would be my answer. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. Let's move on then to part B of this. We need two numbers that when we multiply them together make minus 77 and when we add them together make plus 4. So that minus 77, well that's going to be minus 7 and positive 11 because a positive times a negative is a negative. 11 uh, take away 7 is going to be 4. So I can write that then as a factorization of x minus 7 multiplied by x plus 11. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, so we're moving on at a fairly good pace now. We've got two questions left to go. Um, so please do have a go at these final couple of questions. The first one is from the graph itself, where we're being asked to firstly write down the turning point of this particular uh, graph. Well, the turning point is that point here where the line turns back on itself. So in this particular case, the turning point is going to be minus one 
minus four. Okay, um, the other part of the question is use the graph to find the roots. Okay, now the roots is just another word for solutions. Okay, or another word for solve. Okay, and basically what they mean is the value of x on the uh, on the graph where the line crosses the x-axis. So in this particular case, it's going to be x equals 1 and x equals minus 3. And that would be the answer to that particular question. Okay, hopefully that's all right for you. Let's move on to the very final question on this um, set of worksheets. It is 5a, so hopefully by the time you see this video, I'll, have, I'll be starting on 5b, which will be the next series. Um, I'm also going to do them for the other grades as well. So um, this is complete the table of values for y equals x squared plus 2. I strongly suggest that you just deal with the positives first okay that's what I normally do where I say that well if x is 0 0 squared plus 2 means that y must be just 2 if x is 1 1 squared is 1 because 1 times 1 is 1 plus 2 is going to be 3 2 squared is going to be 4 plus 2 is 6 3 squared is going to be 9, plus 2 is going to be 11. OK, so um, that is part of it. The other bit of it we need to have a look at as well. Now, if you remember that a minus times a minus is a plus. So this basically means minus 1 times minus 1. If I write that out, it's minus 1 times minus one. Well, a minus times a minus is a positive, so it's going to be one, and then one plus two is going to be three, okay? Minus two times minus two is going to be positive four, so four plus two is going to be six, and then minus three times minus three is going to be nine. Nine plus two is 11. So what we've got is a fairly typical quadratic where it actually reflects itself. So the first thing is, is that I'm going to plot zero, two, which is going to be zero and two, which is there. Then I'm going to plot one, three, which is here. I'm going to plot 2, 6, which is there, and then finally 3, 11, which is all the way up there, okay? And then I'm going to go to the negative side, so I've got minus 1, 3, and you can see here we've got this reflection, 2, 6, and then 3, 11, all the way up there. So on the screen, hopefully I'll be able to draw this reasonably well. Okay, remember it's got a curve at the bottom, OK, and it's going to come up like that. That's not too bad. OK, that's the end of this particular worksheet. I hope it's been useful to you. If you're not sure about anything, always add a comment below. I'll always come back to you and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.